Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Boss Rush Podcast, a great place to play games and be better. I am one of your hosts, Corey Deergan. Alongside me, as always, is the complainer of free gifts himself, Laron Dawkins. What's poppin'? <laughs> Complaining about free gifts. You know, a bunch of people it are paying scalpers a, for those things. It was not a complaint. It was not a complaint, dude. <laughs> it's on the tape. I have it on tape. Check check our social media and our YouTube channel later this week it, for. Uh, it was not. It was not a complaint. <laughs> full proof. Also joining us is Stephanie Klimov. Hello. Hey, it's all right. I'm 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 nursing my ego. <laughs> See, look what you did, Laurent. Look what you did. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed crying. You hurt our co host. You're had... embarrassing our guest. <laughs> Stephanie, this had nothing to do with you. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to shut my mouth. I'm going to make it worse if I say anything else. <laughs> he says he's going to shut his mouth, but he's going to keep talking. He's, he's talking. just going to keep talking. <laughs> we love you, Laurent. Uh, our guest tonight is the head of Boss Rush Entertainment. Great writer, great reviewer. Movie Marathon reviews. Great idea. I don't know whose idea Thanks. it was, but I, I'm I'm assuming it was yours, but it was great. It was mine. Is Mark Pereira. That's how you say it, right? Pereira? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I meant to here. ask you before we started, but Laurent just kept talking and then I forgot. So he just was complaining about not about free gifts. I, I understand. Mm-hmm. Free amiibo, guys. Just mm-hmm. I want to throw this out there. Free amiibo, the Metroid amiibo that everybody's looking for. Laurent here complaining. <laughs> <laughs> hi, hi hi mark how are you i'm great i'm happy to be here great you want to tell everybody what you write about on our website bossrush.net before we get yeah. into sure. the show um, i mean i write about all sorts of things but um i'm like you said I'm, I'm the lead on the entertainment side so i've been doing this series movie marathon reviews so um in the lead up to the release of spider-man no way home I think December 17th or something like that. Um, I'm watching one Spider-Man movie a week um, and then putting a review out usually around Friday um, if I'm on top of my game. So this week I'm watching uh, Spider-Man 3. Ooh. Nice. Nice. Which I started, which I've seen before, but I started in the first 30 minutes of it are a fantastic movie. It's really good. And then I'm just waiting for the sheep, the steep decline. Yeah. You know what? You know what, Laron? You know what Mark would be perfect for when we bring it back? Is standard death. Yes. Oh, yes. Hell yes. Because we're aiming more towards like a... Inter- it's going to be like entertainment slash retro style show. Mm-hmm. And uh, move the like these older movies are going to be a, a big part of it. Older in yeah. quotes. 2000, what, seven this movie came out? It's old. Something like that, right? Old. Ancient. Old. Yeah. So also I'm I'm a- also aiming it to fix the huge issue of me not seeing any popular movies from like the 80s or 90s really. So you're hoping me too. I haven't that's why I started these movie marathons for myself was mm-hmm. I'd never seen an Indiana Jones film till the last year. So hey, wait, wait 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 huh? Look, what? It's it's yeah. okay. Look Mark, it's okay. I forgive you. Thank you. Indiana Jones. Thank you. Last Crusade. My third favorite movie of all time, but I will forgive you, okay? Because there are plenty yeah. of movies that I've never seen. So you chose the, poorly. Wait, wait, wait! The number one Indiana Jones fan here in Boss Rush is actually giving you a pass. I, I, I feel, I feel mm. like, I feel like he has a brain tumor right now. There's something going on. I mean, I might. It's fine. It'll go away. <laughs> all right, all right. Like one I more, stepped into something more, I didn't realize I was stepping into. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on, one more time for the people out there in in in, in the Twitch chat. That was not a complaint. I just voiced my disappointment. Mm. Mm. Look, y- y- look y- 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 here, y- here's y- a, here's a, get look. <laughs> I'm gonna name five popular movies I, from the '80s and '90s I've never seen, and then we're gonna move on, and nobody's gonna say a word. Okay, Laron, looking at you. Goonies, Karate Kid, Back to the Future, Alien. Mm. And what was the other one? I forget. It's probably something hey, popular. Alien was not in the eighties. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I am just, I'm just you said eighties and nineties, right? Just because, just because you were standing in line in nineteen seventy-five when it came out, Laurent, doesn't oh, mean. Oh. 
1975 is when I came out. Uh, not that come out. Not that came out. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> This is what, ha- this is what happens one. when Corey and I are on a show together. This is what happens. That was a good one, though. <laughs> yeah. That was good, though. <laughs> Couldn't even time it better if we wrote it. Yeah. See, this is why there's no doc. Clip right there. That's really? all you need is that pod clip right there. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, Ridley Scott's Alien came out in 79. I'm looking it up right now. Uh, <laughs> yep, 79. <laughs> oh, man, that was a good one. Corey, if it makes you feel better, I haven't seen any of those films either. It does make me feel the, better. Thank you. It makes me feel a lot what, better, actually. The movies he the movies he ran off or, or yeah, I've not yeah. seen them. Oh man. Mm. Are mm. you guys even qualified to be in Boss Rush? <laughs> I mean, I started as a Nintendo podcast, okay, so Oh, that explains everything now. <laughs> it does. It does. So I posted in the Discord the other day, I was like, i I'm feeling the itch to play Monster Hunter Rise for some reason. Laurent's like, download the oh, here we P- go. Download the PC demo. I'm like, no. <laughs> no, nerd. I'm gonna play on this three hundred dollar device, <laughs> the inferior version, just out of spite. Now, out of spite. Stephanie, will you play? Will you play uh, Su- uh, Monster Hunter Sunbreak with me when you get your Stream Deck? <laughs> because Steam Deck? you know, yeah, the Steam Deck. I'm sorry, the Steam Deck. Because you know, here's the cool thing. Because I was thinking about this day. You know what? You know what you can do with the Steam Deck that you cannot do with this with the Switch? Hmm. You can go outside and play on the internet. I mean, theoretically, and, people are playing Metroid on Steam or on emulators now. So, I mean, whatever. True. True. You jerks! Yeah, this is yeah, why we're not getting will. a sequel because you're all pirating it. You jerks! <laughs> you mean you mean the you mean the point zero three percent that did not pay for a copy of the game? are going to cause a sequel to not happen. Look, Metroid's not that popular. That is a low percentage. <laughs> you know what? You know what? And by the way, by the way, because I, it, it seems like I got into trouble a couple of weeks ago when I talked, when I talked about the, the, the thing for emulation and stuff like that. I just want to make something very clear. Like I don't support software piracy. Just I don't. Hold it. Hold it. That's a topic tonight. It's my oh, topic. It? Okay. It's my topic. Oh, okay, tonight. cool. Cool. So, yeah, I'll hold it. So hold stop it. pirating the topic. Yeah. Wrong. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> cheesy, cheesy, yeah. Hmm. It works though. It works. Everybody likes good cheese. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll wait. I'll wait for us to get to that topic, then I'll just hijack the whole thing. That's fine. Mm. Anyways, Sounds good. anyways, Mark, I'm glad you're here. Been, I'm glad uh, to be here. We, you've been floating around our chat for about three or four weeks now, so uh, trying to get you on. So it's uh, it's finally yeah. happened. You're a hot celebrity. Yeah. Yes. People want you to ride this high for as long as it lasts. You're like you're like James Bond. <laughs> finally. Great, great movie, by the way. I finally saw it. Great. So you liked it. I did. We can what talk do you about. Think about. Okay, we're gonna talk about we're, it. Okay. We're, we're gonna we're gonna get there. Uh, just want to just want to get the housekeeping out of the way. I'm gonna do it without reading anything. So if I mess up, it's the Ron's fault. He didn't make me a doc. <laughs> 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 this is the Boss Rush Podcast, the flagship show of BossRush.net, where each and every week we come together with our friends from around the internet to talk about video games, entertainment, and everything we love about them. If you like what we do, you can check out BossRush.net for all of our shows, our content, our written reviews, and other things, other cool things. You can follow us on Twitter at BossRushNetwork. You can email the show at BossRushNetwork at gmail.com. And if you listen on iTunes, give us a five-star rating and review. If you want to head on over to our YouTube channel, we'd appreciate that as well. Give us a subscribe. Unsubscribe to Laurent if you're there. Uh, <laughs> the link is right there. Exodus 803. Anyways, we're going to jump into what we've been doing with our lives, what we've been playing, watching, doing. Mark, you're our guest. We're going to go your way first. What are you doing with your life? Uh, that's an excellent question. <laughs> no, I mean, I've been playing Metroid Dread. So I've never I've tried to like Metroid my whole life and have never liked Metroid. Sorry, um, it just wasn't for me. But Metroid Dread, everything clicked for me, and I love the game. But I am terrible at it, so I am slowly, slowly making my way through it. I feel your pain there. Um, and then I'm watching Spider-Man movies right now. I just started Spider-Man Three today. Yeah, is it is it as bad as everybody says it is? And because rem- I remember really liking it, except for like. A couple times where Harry Osborne speaks, 
I mean, it just is like really cringy. The the first thirty minutes of it, which is as far as I've gotten, are fantastic. Like the graphics are fantastic, the story's fantastic, the plot's really good, it's really tight, um, like like tightly um, wound. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying it. But I do remember there are some very cringy scenes um, mm. later on. But it's been it's been a minute since I've seen it. So mm. I remember I remember it was a big deal when Topher Grace was cast as Venom because that right. '70s show was big and he left that show to do movies and this was like his first big role outside of that show and. I remember a lot of people not liking him as Eddie Brock, but I, I don't remember because it's been so long since I've seen those movies. Yeah, he has he's shown up just a little bit, so I don't I don't quite know yet, but I've been enjoying it. And I've also been watching. I mean, I'm behind the times on this one, but I've been watching Squid Game. Hmm. Mm. I hear um, it's weird. I'm on episode, I'm on episode four. It's pretty fantastic. Hmm. So what's the deal with that show? What is it? I don't even know what it is. I just saw, just saw people in PlayStation masks. That's all I've seen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, um, uh, people are competing to win an astronomical amount of money, um, and they're playing children's games to win the money, but um, you lose and you die. Oh. Is essentially the game. Mm. There's a whole lot more to it than that. But, and I don't think that that's a spoiler. I think that's pretty, I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I know it's probably a very bad generalization, but people have been trying to tell me it's kind of like, like a Hunger Games, but right. obviously not the same, but, gen- right. but like, but I, I, I'm ve- I get very wary when people compare it to something else, but. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's the biggest, that's the closest thing that I would compare it to is, is if you had to compare it to something is it's Hunger Games, but it's, it's very bizarre. Um, it's very, um, tense and um, there's like a you know there's a mystery going on and there's it's it's just the characters are great and it's it's not really like anything I've, I've ever seen so um, it's pretty good yeah. cool Hunger Games man what a what a moment in time those movies were mm. yeah and books and whatever else man wow cool I was I was I was more of a maze runner person yeah. oh yeah yeah I remember that I uh, I don't remember Maze Runner. I didn't see it, so I'm assuming it's like you run through a maze and you have to get through the maze or you die or something. So uh, kind of. That's kind of what the premise of the first movie was, but it was there was something a little bit darker going on. There's like, more than one. They made they made three movies. There was oh, uh, if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, there was four books, but there was three movies. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I also. I can't remember, but I did read the book. Sorry, that's all. I was also um, I was also big on the I am number four, even though that only got one movie. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it, it, I think that I think that whole book series has like nine books or something. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, Leron, since since you're already speaking, what are you doing with your life? Well, um, as you guys know, I just completed Metroid Dread, um, and I even wrote a review about it. Yes, I did. Um, uh, other than that, um, I kind of took, I kind of took a little bit of time to deflate cause Metroid, Metroid dominated my, dominated my existence for like a good solid week. <laughs> so I kind of, so I kind of took a break, which means, uh, unfortunately no dead space streaming was happening, you know, while that was going on, which I'll be back on that. Um, I promise, uh, I promise no matter what time, no matter when, I will beat all the games, uh, even if that means it's no longer October. Yeah. Uh, and then beyond that, just been um, have you, uh, have you guys heard the uh, uh, the show Only Murders in the Building on Hulu? Yeah, my wife's watching it. Oh. Is that the one with the the Mar- Steve- is that Martin Short? Yeah, yeah, Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez. I almost said I Steve Harvey. Re- <laughs> Who said Steve Harvey? I said I almost said Steve Harvey. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I want to get Hulu back just to watch that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's like it's actually it's actually really good. Like I, I like I uh like I was watching it one night just on a just on a whim, like you know, just something to have on while I was like eating dinner or whatnot and got and got hooked off that off the first episode. <laughs> nice. And yeah, so the finale the finale just happened last night, but um but I'm waiting I'm waiting for my boyfriend so we can watch it together. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. Aww. So cute. 
<laughs> yeah, hopefully he's not watching because, like, the way I said that just now makes it seem like it's his fault that I haven't watched the finale yet, and, and that's not it. That's <laughs> would, not it. We just I would laugh hysterically kinda... if he started watching it without you. Oh, that you know, there's always that possibility, you know. Uh, but we kind of made it a Friday. We kind of made it a Friday night thing, like a like 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 a pizza and chill night, and and we watched two episodes. Hmm. Man, pizza sounds good right now. Actually, I ate dinner at like four o'clock because I went and well, I'll get there. But I went and saw Double Seven with my dad today, and it's like our one of our things that we do every time a Double Seven movie comes out, we go see it. And we were afraid we weren't going to go get to see this one in theaters because, well, you know, COVID. But we did, and it was good. So, anyways, is that it, Laron? Is that all? Yeah, that's it. I've been pretty boring this week. Yeah. Well, this week, uh, Stephanie, what do you what do you do with your life? Um, I've been pretty boring too. As far as what I've been playing, I'm um, still I'm I don't know if I'm even halfway through Metroid Dread, but I'm deep into Metroid Dread, and I'm still playing through the medium on my um, Xbox. I actually got Far Cry Six. And I was going to play it right before I went to New Hampshire. And then I completely, once again, forget that it takes like 18 or whatever hours to download the thing, even with the the disc. So I was very frustrated that I had to leave it and go to New Hampshire without getting to play it. Um, I certainly wasn't going to love that lug that expensive box to a broken down lodge where it could break or be stolen. So that's, so that's yeah, that's that for now. So I hope to hop into Far Cry 6. Um, in addition to just Metroid uh, Dread and the Medium. Um, when I mentioned New Hampshire, I was on vacation. Um, didn't really go m- very far, again, other than New Hampshire. I did a little bit of cleaning. Uh, actually, it reminded me that I listened to. I started listening to Arsenal, the latest issue, uh, episode of Arsenal X, and you guys were talking about purses. <laughs> we were. We're, we were also cause... talking about girls' jeans with no pockets, so... But it struck a chord with me because I would get so mad every time I put on pants and then I try to shove my hand in the pockets and they're sewn shut. I'm like, what kind of <laughs> cruel joke is this? It's I, I have a I have a very deep seated anger towards whoever made these pants. It's cruel. Like we should be able to put things in our pockets. And I also refuse to lug around a gigantic purse because every time you need something, that one thing you need is at the very bottom corner. Mm. But I will say that I'm not the best person to talk to about what's in a woman's purse because I almost never have a purse because I don't like carrying extra stuff. Mm. So I just have this little wristlet that has all my credit cards and my cash and my phone. I hate purses. Mm -hmm. I have like four that are collecting dust in my closet. We we almost asked you to come on that sh- on that show on Sunday, <laughs> but then we were like, "Well, it's like half hour before the show starts. Maybe maybe she's probably busy." So, well, oh. I guess I wouldn't have that much to add. I will say I am pro pockets for women, and uh, purses are overrated. Hmm. Noted. Let's. I'm gonna write that down and just send it to Stoy. <laughs> so, uh, pockets yeah, are useful. Corey. We are looking forward to hearing more about this 007 movie you've been watching with your dad. Mm, let me tell you, when I saw that runtime was like almost three hours, I was like, oh boy. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is going to be a long movie. But it didn't feel like three hours. Hmm. So, I mean, it was, it it was, man, it was really good. I, I'm, it was a nice bow on the Daniel Craig kind of saga of 007. It, uh. It started out kind of slowish, and I was like, uh, is this going to be this the whole movie? And then, like, obviously it opens up, and it's just action, 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 seeing, like, like what's happening, here's what's happening, here's what's happening. Also, I was really disappointed that Ana de Armas wasn't in it more. Like, they kind of yeah. promoted her as, like, one of the main characters in the movie, and she was only in it for, like, 15 minutes. Yep, I thought like when she, when they parted ways the first time, I'm like, oh, she's gonna swing by around at the end, and yeah. no, like never again. I'm like, what, what? Yeah, I thought she was gonna be secretly like a almost like another double O agent because I knew going in, uh, who's the actress that the the black actress in the movie that I f- I forget what her name is, but she's the new double O seven, right? Because Bond is retired in this movie, and uh, I thought she was gonna be like either her sidekick or like a, another double O or something. Like I, I really thought that she was going to be in it more and she just, she just wasn't. So, uh, 
but I I really loved it. I thought the whole storyline with uh, with Madeline was a cool like twist to the you know the tried and true James Bond you know womanizing uh, kind of motif you know and uh, it was very good. I know we kind of talked about it a little bit pre show uh, Stephanie last week, but mm-hmm. the ending was like. It was an I can't believe they did that ending. Mm-hmm. I can't believe they did it. Right? And there's no end credit scene. Yeah, that's what I was like, just wait to see the end. I would love to know what you think. I, I didn't, well, didn't for the most part see it coming. It was pretty yeah, shocking to me. I didn't oh. see it coming either. I thought, I mean, I I don't want to spoil it, but I, I can't y'all, believe that. Y'all are about, y'all about to make me. Yeah, y'all are tiptoeing <laughs> very closely, too. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. We'll change real quick. I really liked um, Rami Malik. Is it Malik or Malik? Am I, or, or, I, think it's Ram, I think it's Rami Malik. Yeah. Rami, Rami Malik. Malik. Yeah. He yeah. made such a really, a really great villain. He's so mm-hmm. creepy. I love it. Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah. And he was really good. I liked the whole angle of the kind of like silent kind of I can control you with the you know just you know it was it was really cool it was it was man it was such a good movie and like the Russian scientist guy really reminded me of Boris from Goldeneye in like a really fun mm-hmm. way I was like oh my gosh this is awesome he, if there was a new yeah. 007 game I'd be this guy because I was always Boris <laughs> in, in, double, in Goldeneye <laughs> I was waiting for him to say I'm invincible but he didn't say it so it would have been a nice touch Aww. uh but yeah, just like the the Austin Martin at the at the beginning, and just I I love the car scenes. I think this one had probably yeah. the best car scenes in any of the Craig movies. Uh, it was just really good. I if if you're into action movies, I know like Bond is kind of like not what it used to be really in terms of like pop culture, right? But if you're into action movies, and Daniel Craig is probably my favorite Bond, I would say for for sure especially this run of movies uh i actually rewatched skyfall and specter leading up to this movie and it's just like a nice cohesive ending you know because like casino royale and quantum of solace kind of go together i mean they all that they, they all tell like an overarching story but like you can clearly see that casino royale and quantum of solace go together and then uh skyfall specter no time to die all go together and it Mm -hmm. just it was really nice to see like a trilogy of films tell an overarching story and really see bonds kind of humanity come out and i'm gonna be sad when the next bond movie comes out and daniel craig is not bond i will say that so very i'm excited yeah my my dad and i have been watching re-watching the daniel craig movies um we're actually this week gonna watch specter and then we're gonna go see no time to die so i'm I'm pumped to see it I know, right. I know a lot of people didn't really care for Spectre. I love Spectre. I think Spectre is like one of the best Craig movies. Quantum Solace is the weakest, I would say, for sure. For sure. I yeah. still think Casino Royale is the best Daniel Craig movie. Uh, but Skyfall and Spectre are like really, really up there, too. So, And this, this yeah. one is a nice cap. So if you're interested at all in seeing this movie, I highly recommend it. It was so good. So, so good. Uh, but that's what I've been watching. Oh, I also, also watched the Rampage movie on HBO Max. <laughs> I, oh, well, okay. I watched half of it because I was like, and I, I fell asleep while I was watching it. But, uh, I, I don't know. I was in, I wanted to watch something cause like, not to get like, whatever. I got some really, I got some news last week that I'll tell you guys off camera but like i just wanted something that was like mindless and fun and Mm -hmm. just well the rock is fun to watch i guess and i watched giant animals beat each other up and well i don't know i kind of was liking the vibe of it and then i fell asleep and then i didn't go back and rewatch and finish it but it was fun what i watched you know so okay i know i've been on the fence with that because i loved rampage as a kid and not that i expect this movie to be close to anything to that game video game that had minimal plot but i was like what has the rock in it i don't know yeah the rock is an enjoyable human being to watch i know yeah i know he's the rock and he's literally in everything now he's even (laughs) he even came out with a rap song apparently yeah with with tech nine and a couple other people uh 
but like and it wasn't bad no it was not bad at all actually <laughs> uh but it was just like man that he's an enjoyable human being to watch mm. so that's Shazam tr- or the the Black Adam trailer that they showed at DC Fandom man wow kind of want to see yeah, it that's going to be awesome I think. yeah yeah uh but other than that I've been making my way slowly through Metroid Dread I've been playing Destiny, surprise. Uh, also, still slogging through Sable, and I hate it. I don't know why I'm punishing myself, but it's okay. Oh, Tetris Effect Connected also very good. The music's very good. So that's it. That's all I've been playing. Anybody else have anything to say on this before we move to? We're gonna go to Mark's topic first since he's our guest. Yeah, let's do it. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, okay, so I've got I've got two options for topics because one of them requires <gasps> sound clips. So if I can't do sound clips, I can move to the second one. You're spoiling us, Mark. I Love know. this. I know. I, well, I just <laughs> I, I wanted to make sure I did it right. <laughs> so can I? It, ha, it, do I just if I want to play a sound clip? Does that how does that work? I don't know. That's a good question, Leron. How does it work? <laughs> Come on, IT guy, help. Um, I just hope you have a good microphone. <laughs> okay, well then I'll then I'll do then I'll do the second one. Aww. I'll, I'll bring. I mean, what, we can, we what, can... what how this need to work out was uh was Corey would have needed to have like since Corey is uh broadcasting this with OBS, Corey would have needed to have the sound clips uh, ahead of time. Oh, I would need to be and prepared. Then, is what you're saying. And then and then he would have and then he would have had the then he would have just had to incorporate them onto the stream. Hmm. Gotcha. That sounds okay. like a lot of Next work, Laura. Then hey, I'll say you, 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 hey, you I'm asked, never that prepared. You asked me how it was done. Like I just, I just, and I'm not even the best at OBS. <laughs> hmm. uh, okay, so my sec, my follow up option, <laughs> which is no less fun than the other one. Um, so we've got this December, we've got Spider Man No Way Home coming out, and that's going to deal supposedly with the multiverse. Um, supposedly, I mean, in the trailer we see. Alfred Molina as Dr. Octopus again. So we know that there's some pulling in from other Spider-Man movie universes. Um, and then at DC Fandom, they released the the first look at The Flash, um, which will have Michael Keaton reprising his role as Bruce Wayne and Batman. And so my question is, um, with Spider-Man No Way Home and The Flash both dealing with this concept of the multiverse, and now before both of those movies are out, which ones do y'all think is going to handle the, the, the concept of the multiverse and ha- which one do you think has the most, I guess, sort of, um, you know, fan worthy content to pull from? Hmm. Well, how, how is DC and Marvel going to handle the multiverse? How do y'all think uh-huh. that's going to go is my question. I don't know much about the multiverse at all. Cause I suck at, this stuff and like for me for me i'm like okay well clearly marvel's gonna handle it better because they have a huge legacy of movies that uh, obviously like spider-man x-men uh fantastic four before the mcu right so they have the potential to do it better than dc just because like yeah dc is dc has movies but it's it's always like multiple versions of batman and superman they don't have really anything else to pull from at this point right so i mean the flash yeah seeing keaton as batman is gonna be awesome but like is that for a scene is that for like half the movie also there's a cool uh image of two flashes in the same scene but one of them had the painted batman uh costume on with just the lightning bolt spray painted on it which was really funny uh but also i know the Spider-Man movie is a Sony movie and not a Marvel movie, even though Marvel's mm. heavily involved and Sony seems to not have a great track record with fans. Although the Spider-Man movies have been pretty good. I will give them that the, the current ones. Uh, also, I didn't really hate the Andrew Garfield movies, but also I'm a simpleton. So, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, it's Spider-Man fighting big CG bad guys. I don't, I don't care. I, I like, I like CG blow stuff up like i liked the transformers movies just fire me now so uh i don't know i think i think marvel has more to pull from and they can make it more interesting 
but also the more you have to pull from also could make it more complicated and you have more chances to ruin it. Uh, Mm -hmm. But they do have, they've already kind of experimented a little bit with Loki. I know they had, I know Dr. Strange is opening the multiverse up big, you know? So I personally, I think Marvel's going to do it better just by sheer, like just the quality that they've shown over the last 15 years or whatever, uh, you know, heavily involved with the Sony stuff. Um, I'm more interested to see what happens to Spider-Man in the multiverse after this outside the MCU, because uh, apparently there's a scene in Venom where they're teasing stuff, but I don't, I didn't see Venom, so I don't know. Um, I think, I think Marvel's going to pull it off. I think the thing is, is with like DC, their, their track record recently has been so hit or miss and it's been mostly missed for me i've been trying to catch up on them right like wonder woman was okay but it was basically they watched captain america and they're like oh let's just put wonder woman and captain america and that's what that's what i felt the movie was um the snyder cut of justice league was like i was so bored like i was bo- like yeah. i just feel like everything dc's done has been boring and they don't have like a clear vision of what they want to do and they change things because you know they're trying to play catch up and I wish they would just slow down like the, the Batman, right? The Batman looks awesome, but they're not trying to fit it in to catch up or anything. Right. I think they're just trying to do their own thing with it. And, uh, you know, from, from all accounts, Shazam was pretty good. Uh, I just, I just wish, I wish Warner brothers and DC would just slow down and say, let's just do our own thing. Let's, let's, you know, kind of hit reset, which I think is what the Flashpoint movie is going to be, right? It's kind of like a DCEU reset almost. Uh, so I don't know. I th- I think DC could do something interesting, but I just don't think they have enough to pull from to make yeah. it interesting. That's my take. Sorry, guys. No, I actually, uh, I, follow, I follow that pretty well because at first my knee-jerk reaction would be like, oh, Marvel. I mean, they've like have been behind the scenes kind of setting up all these instances and possibilities for the multiverse. Everything's connected in one way, shape or form, but it does get a bit intimidating a bit much. And there is a possibility where it could just be a little too convoluted, Um, but I still have high hopes for Marvel and with DC. I kind of also feel that a lot, there've been a lot of misses for me lately. And, but I, I don't want to put my own personal thoughts about DC and Marvel into what I think. And with, you know, just the, just knowing that Michael Michael Keaton's come back as Batman, I think. D- what the heck? Oh, I'm sorry. My cat's just like pulling on my <laughs> the back of my chair. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. Um, I think they might be able to give Marvel a run for their money this time around because, you know, pulling in some oldies will, will kind of, you know, I don't know if it's the nostalgia thing or just kind of, it just might give it that right spark to you know, set that fire and get um, DC going. At least that's what I hope for. I'm really rooting for them and thinking that they, they, this would be their chance to do the, things right. The only I've, so to my, to back to my point, to be fair, I've never seen Batman, the Michael Keaton, Batman movie. <laughs> what? I've, I've never, what? the only old Batman movie I've seen <sighs> Is whichever one Arnold Schwarzenegger is Mr. Freeze. It's the only one I've ever <laughs> oh my seen. My gosh, that's terrible. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> you need to chill out. Uh, but <laughs> that's a great movie in, in a certain way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in its uh, own flavor. Right. So, like, again, I don't know a lot. I I, I get it. I suck. I get it. Chat. I see you suck i get it uh but like i if how many how many versions of batman can you have in one movie right like i feel like they're just gonna keep going around in this circle and dc cast has a great cast right i i think the casting for all of the characters is on point i think uh uh ezra miller as flash is awesome like he was the best part of justice league by far uh, I think I think Ben Affleck 
looks the part of Bruce Wayne and Batman. Like, I think he looks that I think Henry Cavill's a great Superman Gal Gadot. Like, I think they made Aquaman cool with, uh, what's his face. Like, I think they made Aquaman a character that people look at and be like, Oh man, he's cool. He's cool. And, and oh my God, it's just, I, I don't know, man. If, I just I just don't want it to be like oh remember this Batman remember this Batman remember this Batman and they don't they can't pull from anything else right unless they like CG Christopher Reeves in there at some point like I just don't I don't know what they're going to do with this yeah I I just don't think they have enough history in movies to pull from like you can't you can't get Adam West back right like you know rest in peace like it, you know. It's not like you can go back to that era and get him in it, right? I Oh, and um, Aquaman, Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa, Thanks, yeah. Thanks, David Lasby yeah. on chat. Thanks, David. I knew that. I just forgot. He's just such a cool-looking guy that I just, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think if you look at, I mean, so, um, sorry, Moran, I didn't give you a chance to, to answer, so. I'll, oh, I'll... Uh... <laughs> Okay, so my my take on this is um is DC may have an edge on this just because and and this is a and this is a reach though because like if you look at the DC television universe they've already done this and they and That's what I, was what, just gonna say. I forgot and, about the TV stuff because they've done the TV stuff has done it really well yeah as, yeah exactly from what I've heard they've done it really they've done it really well like I don't really watch a lot of DC stuff as a matter of fact. I was I was a big I was I was a big like you know fan of DC stuff when Arrow and the Flash first came out but uh mm-hmm. but Arrow got too drawn out for me and I just I just I just no longer had a connection to it and mm-hmm. the Flash the Flash made the cardinal sin of um of like the first season the, the season finale for for the first season was great they start they start you off in the middle of they start you off on the season premiere mm-hmm. the second uh, the second season in the middle of what was the season. And I was like, wait, huh? Like I, I'm one of those people, one of those people, you cannot do that to me as a writer. You mm-hmm. cannot do that to me. You can't, you can't just, you can't just time skip. And then don't even tell us that, Oh, we're going to let you know how, how it fixed itself from the finale, but you got to wait, you know, uh-uh, mm-hmm. no. So that immediately like killed it for me. And then, you know, like, but going back to the whole thing, like from everything I'd been told about, like the DC television universe did a, fan- a fantastic job of doing the multiverse because they had the Legends of Tomorrow series that kind of kicked the whole thing in, in, into um, into high gear. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I feel like if they I feel like if they do it correctly and they pay attention to what was done on the television side, they'll be all right. But we also know that they don't take the television side of things seriously because if they did take the television side of things seriously. They would have cast some of those actors, you know, and put them in the Justice League. You know, that well, would have been easy. Ezra that Miller, would have been... Ezra Miller did right. show up in the Flash, in the show. Oh, I know he did show. I know he did show up in the show. Yeah, I know that. But you know, he wasn't one. He's not. A, he was not an, an original cast member. No, 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 no. No, I know. Yeah, mean. I just. Yeah, but uh, but because man, like the fact that you had like practically every person that played Superman on the TV shows, like you know, in that whole in that whole like crossover event that was mm-hmm. that was phenomenal you know even though like dean kane's a jackass you know but whatever yeah <laughs> um but yeah but you know so in in my opinion in my opinion i think dc has the edge but i have a funny feeling that marvel is just gonna take it and run with it because yeah like loki is like the prime example loki is like the prime example and the events of avengers endgame like mm. those are those are prime examples of a whole multiverse theory thing because technically they kind of already did that multiverse theory thing starting with Endgame because yeah. like they they did that time travel stuff and we saw how things were unraveling that scene where uh, that scene where where uh, where Bruce Banner goes to New York during the during the Chitari incident and runs into runs into the uh, uh, was it the ancient one the ancient mm-hmm. one right yeah. yeah. And sh- and she was like, no, this is this is what happens here. And then and then we saw we saw bits and pieces of that as the other Avengers were traveling in time. We saw what was going on and how the timeline was unraveling. And then Loki just took it to like, they just he they just multiplied it times a hundred. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I have a funny feeling that Marvel. I have a funny feeling Marvel's gonna gonna be the one that that basically performs. Yeah. But DC, if they pay, if Warner Brothers and DC, if they pay attention to the to the to stuff they've already done, they'll be all right. 
Yeah. And I think I think it'd be entertaining for everybody. Like the DC the DC uh the DC movie universe is not is not my favorite. Like 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 the chat said, there's been some hits or misses there. Like I love the su- I love the first Suicide Squad movie. I haven't seen the second one yet, so I don't know. Um I actually enjoyed um I actually uh, I actually enjoyed Man of Steel, even though I had questions about Man of Steel. Like, why does why does Krypton look like you know like prehistoric? Like, <laughs> I I liked Man of Steel too, but yeah, I liked it. I liked uh, I liked it. You know, um, never never gave the Justice League a chance. I loved the first Wonder Woman movie. The second one, ooh, I don't know if I just need to rewatch that and 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 come at it from a different angle because I hmm. I did not walk away from that movie enjoying it. <laughs> I uh yeah. to your point Laron, I wonder if I wonder if Marvel opened the multiverse stuff up too quickly with Loki, right? They just like they didn't do like, oh, here's one thing, here's, you know, here's two things. There's like serious like you, you look at you if you watch the end of Loki in the timeline just like, you know, it's like a you know, just, just it's just everything it's like it's like it's like it's like spilling a bag of marbles on the floor and yeah. just watching them go everywhere <laughs> yeah and i wonder if that's gonna cause problems later down the line or if they're just no. gonna be like look here's what happened whatever we're gonna tie it all up nice no because i because you know what they the way they the way they fix this is the way they fix this is just like how they fix an end game it's time travel mm. yeah that's uh, honestly, honestly, when it comes to television and movies, that's your ultimate fixer right there. Time travel is your ultimate fixer. Like, like, have you ever watched an episode of a TV show, like a sci-fi TV show, and like the like the episode was like just going, just going batshit crazy, and you're like, how are they going to resolve this by the end of it? And then boom, it's a time loop or something. <laughs> that's exactly how all this stuff is going to wrap up in the MCU. Because if it does. If, the only other way it can wrap up like that is divine intervention, and we're already seeing the Celestials are showing up. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Is that is that what the Eternals think, is about? The Celestials. Uh, yeah. I don't. I'm lost now. Well, I mean, we've ar- we already got a hint of the Celestials because um, uh, see, here's here's Guardian, my nerdism. Guardians about that. two, I know had. No, uh, Guardian. Guardians one though, like the that was the very first mention of Celestials because uh, when they go to that planet, uh, what was it called? Nowhere. Oh and yeah, with that big. T- it was celestial. a it was it was a skull. Yeah, yeah, and they and they mentioned the celestials right there, but no one really pays attention to that unless you know you're a comic fan. And I was there like, uh, you know, because like I have a big history in X Men, hmm. uh, X Men comic books. Like I know for sure, like when you do something to a celestial, like usually the rest of them show up. So I was actually shocked that we hadn't seen the celestials at this up to this point. But they mur they murdered one in Guardians too, right? Like. That that was, was Kurt Russell's was, character, right? Is, oh, is Ego? A, yeah. Was Ego an actual celestial? I can't remember. I think he said he was a celestial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I thought he said he was. Oh, see, so hmm. basically, basically, Marvel's not Marvel. Didn't, the Marvel MCU didn't pay attention to the to the comic book rules because usually, hmm. usually when a celestial is is killed or gravely injured, like uh, like the rest of them show up and they basically like equalize everything. Well, maybe they're just really far away. Now they're yeah, coming. Maybe, they're just maybe. now getting here. Nah, that's, nah, that, that's not that's not that's not true. Because Space they travel. Almost, they almost they almost um because uh because because we find out in one of the X Men comics that Apocalypse is actually is actually a um a celestial mm-hmm. and um and young Thor in a drunken stupor like like you know with the with the axe like basically almost cleaved them in half and stuff and the celestials showed up and they almost put the world into another prehistoric ice age. Hmm. Maybe no one liked Ego. He was kind of a jerk. Also, Ego, yeah. Ego is Cyclops' dad in one of the comic runs, not Peter Quill. So I'll throw that out there. Huh. They kind of they kind of screwed that up. I know Peter they Quill did. <laughs> so yeah, my, my 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 vote is my vote is like Marvel has Marvel has the edge, but DC might surprise them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think DC is going to come out the winner because I feel like. The DC movies of late have been so all over the place, but there was a time when DC movies were really good. And yeah. yes, it's just Batman and Superman, but I mean, can you imagine? You know, I, I think Marvel's going to do like scatter shot, like like you know, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield and Hugh Jackman and you know um, Patrick Stewart, and just like have like all of these people. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling that they're going to do that. It's just going to be a lot, and that's going to be really cool. But it's going to be quick little cameos, mm-hmm. and I well, feel that's... like DC is going to pick really intentional 
a couple of callbacks to other DC films, but have them be in larger roles. Mm -hmm. This is just my hunch. And so like you've got Michael Keaton, who's rumored to be not just a big part of the flash, but like a big part of the DC universe moving forward. Um, And so I think it's going to, I think, I think DC is going to surprise us by focusing on a few quality cameos and tiebacks to when they used to be good. I which mean, which is, if, which is how I think they get fans trust back, right? Is making, you know, sure. make these cameos matter. Give us a few quality movies to build right. that trust back. Right. Cause like, I mean, like I right. said before, like they're trying to play catch up while well, they don't need to play catch up. They just need to do their own thing. And I think this is the way that they earn, people's trust back like okay if michael keaton's gonna be a big part of the dceu moving forward or at least like you know a bigger part of it does that mean we get a batman beyond movie which would be cool right or uh and and you don't to to, you don't even need to have i mean i I get the point that there's so many batman and and superman movies or whatever that's really all that they have to pull from but imagine like you know in the in the batman begins dark knight dark knight rises cillian murphy's scarecrow shows up in every movie imagine if cillian murphy is in the flash Mm -hmm. as scarecrow and so all that does is it ties the dceu to the most successful iteration of batman who everyone loves and then it's just like hey yeah we've got crap films now but remember when we made really great ones well now they're all part of the same Mm -hmm. story Mm -hmm. and so now all of a sudden it's like they're not playing catch up they've caught up because they've been doing it for years Mm -hmm. they just are now it's all the same thing. Uh-huh. I was just thinking about something while while you were talking, Mark. Uh, you know, what if they use this to actually like bring cohesion to the entire universe? Like, what if they use this as the center point and everything going yeah. forward is like that? What if this is finally their way to actually fix what's wrong with the DC movie universe? Yeah, yeah. Get rid of what doesn't work and keep what does. Right. So at the end of the whatever the stakes are for Flashpoint, at the end of it, you've got a universe where you know, Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn exists, but not some of the other bad stuff from the Suicide Squad that didn't really work. Or yeah. you've got a universe where, you know, there is a Batman, but it's not necessarily Ben Affleck. It's Michael Keaton because that one worked and Ben mm-hmm. Affleck didn't work. Mm-hmm. Where Henry Cavill can continue to be Superman and you get rid of the movie where he's killing people, right? Which is not in character. So it's a really great way to retcon a lot of the mistakes that they've made. Wait, wait, there was a movie, there was a movie where he was killing people? Didn't he kill Zod? In Man of Steel, he, he well, killed then, no, well, well, that was, he, he well, just that didn't was, that care was, about collateral damage. In the- yeah, well, that was a um, – well, okay, there we go. I was about to say that, – That's why um, he's not, he's not going out and attacking people. I'm just saying he didn't care about – Yeah, because, uh, cause, yeah, like, um, like he was kind of maneuvered into killing Zod. <laughs> yes, yes. Let me rephrase what I said. He, he accidentally is killing people, but that's not – Yeah. The comic book Superman. I mean, he's he's supposed to be, you know, protecting people. So anyway, it could be. I think DC has a has a chance to finally get in the same leagues as mm. Marvel. Yeah, I hope so. Um, just yeah. because, like, don't get me wrong, I enjoy the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but like, like I I told my dad today after we watched Bond, it was like it was so nice to just watch something that wasn't like marvels bleeding all my eyeballs you know what i mean like I, it's just like we watched something that wasn't superhero or just i don't know i and I, i'm a disney fan like i'm a big disney fan i'm a big marvel fan i just sometimes i just need a break you know and yeah didn't we talk about bring up marvel and franchise fatigue yeah that was last yep. week yeah we did and it's just like man it was so nice to see something and like i would like to see I, I would really like to see a good DC movie because, like, I feel like what DC's done in the past, it's a little bit more grounded. It's a little bit more realistic. Like, I feel like the Dark Knight movies are, like, prime example of what I would want from Batman moving forward, right? And that's what the yeah. that's what the Batman looks like at this point, right? It's like, oh, it looks, like, a little bit more grounded. It's a different version of Gotham. You know, the Riddler is scary. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of what i want right so but then i also want to look at the flash and be like oh this is clearly probably going to be their version of spider-man he's going to be fun he's going to have you know one-liners uh you know just really dumb fun so i don't know what i want basically what i'm saying 
I'm a simpleton. That's what I said. So, <laughs> that was a good topic. I enjoyed it. Yeah, that was yeah, awesome. It was. Mm-hmm. Thanks. You need to come back um, sometime soon so we can do the one that involves sound clips because I'm very interested in what yeah. that was. Yeah, I yeah. was excited about that one. I mean, it's super nerdy, but... Um, <gasps> that's what we're I'm here for. We're See, that's there. what I'm talking about. Right. So I was excited about it. So hmm. I'll be more prepared next time. Guess we got to invite him back, guys. Darn. Uh, <laughs> oh, right. Oh, I don't want to presume. <laughs> How dare you, sir? How rude of me. How rude. <laughs> uh, Stephanie, what's your topic? Uh, nothing, you know, too exciting, but I was thinking about this um, when I was perusing through Game Pass, which I guess I'm not sure that really counts, but I want to talk a little bit about double dipping uh, with games. Maybe not movies so much, so maybe I'll stick with just what I know with video games. Um, I came from a time where I really could only afford maybe just one game a year, and <laughs> I don't know what happened. It's not like I'm making more money, but... Um, you know, as my the number of my systems expand, uh, number of systems or consoles expanded, and you know, certain games I want physical copies of. Like my copy of Metroid Dread was supposed to arrive on release day, and for whatever reason, Target delivered it late, and I was this close to buying, you know, <laughs> the digital um, e copy, the digital copy, and maybe just like I don't know, keep the physical copy sealed. I don't know. Um, and again, I know it's not uh, double dipping per se, but there are plenty of games where maybe I bought on the Switch or even my PS4, and then I hop on Game Pass when I got my Xbox. And I'm like, oh, it was there. Maybe I should. But anyway, so I'm kind of babbling uh, to start off this topic. But I'd like to know, like, have you guys double dipped with games? Was it intentional or accidental? And is there a benefit to having maybe a digital and physical? Obviously not all the time because that's costs more money, but, you know. I see. I just see Monster Hunter running across Laurent's face right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, um, I pretty much bought uh, up until a certain point. I pretty much, well, shit, actually, currently I bought multiple copies of the same monster earning game across different platforms but there was a time when there was a time when if i bought if i bought the monster earner game like it usually got bought again you know for a different platform and for a good little while basically when it was just only on nintendo D- uh, ds that was the only time i didn't double dip but we're double dipping again because ps4 and the xbox one version of monster Hunter world came out and i bought the pc version uh but then of course i stayed on the pc version Monster Hunter Rise is out on the Switch right now. PC version's coming. I will buy it one more time, you know, and but I will continue to play it just on the PC and stuff like that. But yeah, I am I am one of those people, like I have doubled and triple dipped. Um uh, remember 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 a little game called Street Fighter Alpha? Mm. I've bought Alpha 2 and Alpha 3 so many times across different platforms. Uh, I am almost ashamed to admit you know that you know like i was stupid and spent money like that but you know uh, the, the thing was back when like for example when street fighter alpha was a popular game you had different consoles that had different degrees of power like like uh like sure if you want to play the best version of street fighter alpha the first game you bought you bought it for sega saturn but you spent some you spent a little bit more money and by a little bit more money i mean 70 dollars and you buy the by the 4 megabyte ex, the 4 megabyte expansion pack for the saturn and it's arcade perfect. It, yeah, so I was doing I was doing dumb stuff like that. I was actually importing games from from Japan because they were the more superior version. And it will even though I already have the U.S. version of the game and stuff like that. Yeah, I double dip. I double dip like a madman. As a matter of fact, I already said I'm buying a physical copy of Metroid Dread real soon because I because I just want to have the box art and all that stuff. Box art is cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so um so 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 yeah, I'm one of those people, yeah. I I I, I do that cardinal sin of double dipping. And I don't even, I don't even know why I call it a cardinal sin because you know in all honesty, like it's it's more units that push that push the sales and stuff like that. Now I know I give I know I, I, I know I throw a lot of shade, you know, for guys who have like four Nintendo Switches. I know two people that do that personally. Not not just people on Boss Rush, but I know two people in real life that actually have four switches and I was like, dude. Like it, it, this is excessive. You don't even have a wife and kids. Why do you have this many Nintendo Switches? Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, you know. So I don't really call it a cardinal sin, but you know, like sometimes, like the level of excessiveness is kind of crazy. And I, I, it took me a long time to rein that in. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think for me, if there, um, 
the two main reasons for me to want to get an extra copy is if there's something with exceptional box art or I feel like, I don't know, might hold some value. Uh, maybe less so for that. Also, if I already have the existing game, and I hate to say like on the Switch or something, but then I know the game's coming out on Xbox. I'm just making it up. I will probably be like, I love mm-hmm. you, Switch, but I might want, depending on the game, I, might... hmm. I don't know, but then I'd have to start the game all over. So, but anyway... That's that's one of the things that actually got me out of that habit of doing it. I got tired of starting over again. You know, yeah. some games some games you absolutely have no problem starting over and there's other games it's like why did I just do this? Yeah. There's a there's a lot of I mean, a lot of games now are starting to do like the cross save stuff and I know Monster Hunter is not one of them. Sorry, Leron. Uh Oh yeah. Oh, but... oh, oh, you oh, you just don't know. Like I've actually got a whole bunch of ammunition cuz I'm getting ready to write I'm getting ready to write uh, everything we know about Monster Hunter Rise and Sunbreak real mm-hmm. soon here. Yeah. Uh so for me like Destiny was a big one because they didn't have cross play or cross save and I ha- I have Destiny 2 for three different platforms and uh because that's just where my friends were, right? Like, uh, if I want to play with my PlayStation friends, I have to play on PlayStation. But now, with the cross-save and cross-play activated and stuff, like, I can play anywhere right now. I can even play on my it's phone at this point. so nice. I is that so nice? It is. I can play on Stadia if I wanted to. Not that anybody is, but... Uh, so, I mean, Destiny was a big one. But also, like... A lot of the times, Stephanie, you brought up Game Pass, and a lot of times I will download a game on Game Pass and play it, especially indie games. And if I like the indie games, I will turn around and buy it on Switch just to support the developer and uh, take it with me on the go. Because, I mean, yeah, cloud gaming is cool and stuff, but, like, still not where, you know, you really want it to be at this point. Uh, And so the Switch having it downloaded on my switch is a way better experience than trying to hook a computer or hook up a, a controller up to my phone and trying to play it that way uh but i i've also double dipped a lot on other games because like i mean it's a different situation i know not everybody's in this situation but uh, obviously when ed and i started pow block we were playing a lot of games on nintendo consoles that maybe weren't the best place to play third-party games and some would argue may might still not be, uh, but I played games like I double dipped on games like Watch Dogs and uh, what other games? Oh, like Assassin's Creed and Batman and like all these games on the Wii U. And then I started double dipping on games like Doom and Wolfenstein and stuff on Switch, uh, just because we were trying to cover Switch games and stuff and Wii U games on Pal Block and uh, obviously not the best versions of Doom and Wolfenstein by any stretch. Uh, But yeah, I I found myself double dipping stuff just for the convenience of portability and uh, supporting Mm -hmm. indie devs. And that's where I find double dip, double dipping. Uh, Also my entire switch library is, is digital, but I do have physical copies of all the, all the Zelda games and Xenoblade games and just games that I like in general on switch. So I do double dip quite a bit actually. Now that I think yeah. about it, kind of embarrassing. I'm not sure what, actually. what you mentioned that made me think about it. Maybe it's when you mentioned cloud gaming. I don't know. But I feel like one place where I, I might find myself double dipping a lot more, especially as anniversaries are popping up like crazy, like just at, every year there's a, a major anniversary. If there are games that maybe I bought like one or two w- within the franchise or series, and then they come out with the anniversary collection. And the one I initially have in mind is like Kingdom Hearts or something, which that's a whole nother topic. Maybe Laurent and I will write about someday. <laughs> but I know I'm not going to buy the collection. I technically own like, for example, Kingdom Hearts three on PS4, but I'm still going to buy the edition that has it in there. So I don't know. Mm. the story so far collection. Did you buy that? The whole no, box set? No, not, not no. <laughs> mm. I have it for PlayStation four and I don't even own my PlayStation four anymore. So whoops. It- they're throwing some sort of anniversary celebration next year. I'm sure they'll have yeah. something big. Because it's the, what, 20th anniversary? God, 20th. God, that makes me feel so old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was playing Kingdom Hearts 2 in college. Ugh. I have their soundtrack, and you know how it is? It's on a mm. CD. I know. None of my <laughs> devices have a, a CD thing. I don't I know. know what to do with it. I had to buy a, <laughs> I had to buy 
a disk drive to rip CDs onto my lap, my new laptop because it doesn't have a disk drive. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. There you go. Thank you. See, oh. me and my vocabulary. By the way, though, Sanctuary, it's a great song. Kingdom Hearts, it's great. Mark, how about you? Have you ever double dipped? Um, what do you think about it? I mean, I'm a Nintendo fan, and I think Nintendo's one of the pillars of their business strategy is making you buy everything all, all over, over, again. over yeah. again. And I gladly will every single time um, because I just love uh, the Nintendo games that I love. But but short of that, um, I'm not a huge double dipper, not by principle, just by I typically will get the game in what what pla- I, I don't care so much about like graphical fidelity or or you know frame rate or anything like that. Like if if you know Hades came out on Switch first, so I played it on Switch. I don't care that it's on anything else now because I played it on Switch and that's where I played it. And so um, now when it comes to like movie, I, I'm a physical um, media person. It's very difficult for me to like. Um, I have an Xbox Series X, and that was a very difficult decision for me to make series s because it's just digital right um but and so when it comes to movies and stuff i like to own movies on dvd and blu-ray um but movie like i'm a huge batman fan and so i own all of you know every batman movie on blu-ray and dvd um because you know i want to whatever the situation (laughs) i want if i want to watch it i want to be able to watch it and so i own those digitally i own them physically on on blu-ray and and dvd um but for games i'm not that i'm not that whatever it comes out on. if i want to play the game i typically want to play it when it comes out and i get it on whatever platform it's on and for me i don't know people might disagree with this if it's on all three platforms which i have all three i'm gonna get it on the switch just because it's if if i want to play it on my tv i can play it on my tv if i want to play it in my bed i can play it in my bed so like I said, I don't really care so much about performance or anything like that. So, yeah. okay. that's kind of. I'm where glad I was... you brought. Up... Oh, go ahead, Corey. Oh, Sorry. I was going to say that's where I kind of lean to, just because like I have two kids and my TV's usually not available. And right. if I'm playing while they're up, it's got to be in portable mode. Or if I'm playing something when they're in bed, it's usually something with my friends on one of the other platforms. So I mean, it's like you know, it's. Switch is usually where I lean for most of my games anyway now, just based on sheer availability and time and children. Yeah, yeah. Time is so limited, right? I've got three kids, so to my time, my free time is so limited that mm-hmm. if I have it, I need to be able to be flexible to play it where and when I can play it. Yeah. Good point. Um, I'm also glad, Martha, you brought, um, brought up movies because – It just made me realize kind of how I treat digital versus physical between movies and video games because I miss owning a lot of DVDs. I still hoard all the DVDs that I've ever owned in my adult life. But I don't know, lately I'm just like, well, do I have the space for all the DVDs? And Mm -hmm. what do I use to put in? Like I would use my PS4. But like, you know, for the most part, it's like, all right, I'm just going to buy this movie digitally. I'm on Amazon Prime, buy it digitally, buy it digitally. But when I'm playing my video games, I mean, I have, trust me, I have a library backlog full of um, digital games, but I actually favor physical copies more. Um, And I'm not sure why now, because I used to favor physical copies of movies and I just got so used to just purchasing digitally. I'm almost kind of like, ooh, I wonder if the same thing's going to happen to me to video games someday. Right. I feel like digital is like is like um is like the most dangerous place to like get all your games. I really do, because I feel like you can wind up you can wind up basically like filling your entire library up with games and then never having any time to play them because like you don't have any you don't have them just sitting there looking at you on like a shelf or something. Hey, that's very legit. My Nintendo Switch library looks scary and that's because i'm in that e-shop buying all these games that are on sale i'm like oh just one more and oh, just one more but yeah speaking of double <laughs> dipping every time those resident evil games go on sale on this on this on this on the nintendo e-shop i damn near buy them all it's because they're like <laughs> eight dollars like, always yeah. and i'm like well no you know what it's crazy because like games from games from a certain generate from a certain era of uh, of gaming the the PS2, the the GameCube era, the Dreamcast era, and stuff like that. For some strange reason, 
Like I feel like those are the best games to have in a portable in a portable environment. Like mm-hmm. like God when I mean, you know, like certain games come out like what like for those Resident Evil games are an example. I'm trying to think of one that I know I have that I that I really these Kingdom Hearts games, for example, like mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not the big I don't have the biggest love for Kingdom Hearts anymore right now, but there's a good but there's a piece of me that wants to play Kingdom Hearts one and two on in portable format. Yeah, well that cloud that cloud stuff like it works when it works it's that, great cuz like I so quick story on the Switch cloud gaming stuff. I played a little bit of Control on Switch when it first came out cuz like they released like an hour demo and like it played great. Like 60 frames a second uh you know it, it was really responsive until it wasn't. And then it just, you know, just just flat out almost died on me and then it then it came back and it was fine but like that's what you're gonna get with this cloud gaming stuff and that's why i'm just still like really sketchy about it you know uh but yeah leron to your point there's a bunch of like 360 era games or like original xbox gamecube ps2 games like kingdoms of amalur is a great switch portable game or saints row the third or Stubbs the zombie is ridiculous or destroy all humans right like they re-release that on switch it's hilarious and it's great in portable mode like man do you know do you know how hard sego step on our necks right now if they put skies of arcadia legends on? oh my gosh dude i'd be like i'd sell a kidney for that it (laughs) i mean i mean i would have to like god i might it was funny the was it today or yesterday so i bought i bought a few things on switch right like i bought metroid and then uh, Tetris Effect was on sale, and then I bought the final Smash Fighter pack. Finally, like kind of all in a row, and like we're not like poor or anything, but one hundred twenty dollars is a lot of money to spend on stuff, right? Like, and she she asked me, she's like, "What are all these Nintendo purchases?" I'm like, "Oh, uh, well, Metroid came out, so I had to buy that, and then Tetris, new version of Tetris. You know how I feel about Tetris. I had to buy that." And then something else was on sale, so I had to buy that. And then she just kind of gave me this look, and I was like, "That's it, though. I promise for now." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it was... everybody's wallet's hurting right now. <laughs> just as a side note, yeah, yeah. But, like over on last night's crossroads, we were talking about how this week is like the first week in like seven weeks where like it's not a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah. And then, and so. I'm sitting here thinking I do like our audience a PSA by saying, hey, like now's a good time to not pay full price for a bunch of games because there's a good sale going on in the PlayStation Store till the 27th. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. Freaking, freaking Chris. <laughs> freaking Chris, like this morning, this morning in the chat, he's like, he's like, yeah, I bought, I bought these games. And he lists off seven games from this, from this, from the, from the PlayStation sale. And I was like, I was like, dude, you have a problem because you, <laughs> Because like in, Chris like, has been in, like, hanging out one, with Ed for too long. Yeah, in like one <laughs> sense, he's like, my wife's gonna kill my wife's gonna kill me if I buy any more games. And then th- the next day after a podcast, he's like, <laughs> and this is Chris has been on the show for officially for four weeks. Every week after the every week, the next day after the show, oh, I went and bought this, this, and that, and I was like, dude, like, like Hannah's gonna murder you. I think the only reason why she's keeping you alive right now is because she does not know how like she's going to be able to provide for y'all's son if she murders you. <laughs> but you need to chill. I got a I got an email today saying that there's over 200 games on sale on Xbox right now. Also, and I was like, Stop telling me this. <laughs> hey Stephanie, Stephanie, there's over 200 plus games on sale for on Xbox right now, <laughs> Play, including Assassin's Halloween. Creed Odyssey, which is like 15 bucks right now. Great game. Yeah. PlayStation's Halloween sale just just started, and that's on top of the sale that's happening through the 27th. <laughs> I'm re shopping. <laughs> I can send you the uh, pure Xbox link if you want, Stephanie, to show you stop. which of the best stop games it. are on sale. Everybody, stop. oh, I'm about to, oh, I'm about to throw the sale link uh, for the for the Halloween sale. <laughs> it's in the chat. Uh, so, uh, I yeah, mean, I mean, but. I mean, but for real, like you know, like let's uh, let, let, let's let's see something here, real real fast. Um, if you want, if you want the Devil May Cry Five Plus Virgil for twenty one dollars, boom, on PlayStation. Okay, so here's here's one I constantly see on sale. Um, 
There you go. Thank you, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> After I buy 20 more PlayStation's game, I'll hop up on Xbox and buy 20 of that. Um, <laughs> it's Outlast, the first Outlast game, because I'm the biggest weenie. I don't actually prefer horror games, but I apparently have been playing through a couple. But I've watched a Let's Play about last, and I'm still terrified. But it's like on sale for four bucks. I'm like, come on, Steph, you could do it for four right? bucks, right? Mm. No, know. no, spooky games know. are worth four dollars. Pass. I, I don't know if I can. Pass. I will pass. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's some good games for sale here. I know there are. There's a lot of great games for sale. <laughs> Wait, uh, are you looking at the Xbox One? I want to see. I'm looking at the one that Corey just sent. Yeah, there's yeah, a like, lot. Yeah, like last yeah, like last night I was telling people like the Mass Effect Legendary Edition is um is is uh crap. Hold on, let me pull up let me pull the show notes. Cause uh Mass Effect Legendary Edition is on like one of the best sales ever for the PS4 edition, and I had to remind people it was like, yeah, like there's only the PS4 edition yeah, because there's no PS5 edition. It's thirty two dollars on Xbox right now. Um on PlayStation it is Okay, on PlayStation is thirty five dollars, hmm. and then well, Persona Five Royal is twenty one twenty one dollars, hmm. and that and and that's the deluxe edition. Hmm. Obviously, these are all online stuff, right? Because I got the yeah. Mass Effect Legendary Edition, but I actually I just preferred to have the physical copy of that, so I got it right. I probably paid full price for that. No, I got the I got I I have this the Steam version of it, so um, <laughs> so I I don't have a physical, unfortunately. Hmm. I kind of wish I had a physical for it, but but you know what? I have a physical yeah, for the original but the, Aspect the, trilogy. Man, the thing with... Man, we'll save that topic for a different day. I got a whole... I don't know. Physical copy oh, yeah. things. So, uh, Topics. Thank you. Great, great topic. Wonderful topic. Great topics tonight, guys. God. Hey, finger snaps. Okay. Uh, Who next? Laron, La- what's your topic? Okay. Well, going along with the, going along with the whole theme of double dipping and all that stuff, uh, I want to hear your guys' like biggest biggest regret when it comes to gaming. Uh, and it could oh, be God. a purchase. It could be a purchase you really should not have made. It could be it could be a game series that you just got sucked into, and now you wish you'd never l- lost all those hours into it. Destiny. Like just one of your <laughs> just one of your biggest like just one of your biggest regrets when it comes to gaming. Destiny. No, I'm just kidding. Destiny? No. It's really. No, it's not a regret. It's just like I love that game so much, but like I don't have the time to like really play the game how it's supposed to be played anymore. And like I I put so many hours into it and it's just like I I feel like I'm always behind in playing catch up and it's just that it's that feeling of excitement when you finally do a thing. But then it's also like a feeling of dread, feeling like you're behind all the time. Uh, but I, I've I've been playing with some of my friends who are kind of just like we just kind of you know play however we feel like playing at this point now. So it's not really a big deal anymore. Uh, it was that was more of like a joke answer. But uh, biggest regret in gaming? I don't I don't know. I I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to think. Somebody go. All right, while he's thinking, I'll show you, and I'll obviously say it to the people who listen to the podcast, I'll show you what my greatest regret is. Oh, <laughs> so for the audience, I'm holding up a physical copy of Just Dance 2021, and I tried to sell it at various yard sales and no one would buy it. So. No one would buy it? No, no, in my defense, it di- I didn't really buy it for me. I was um, mm. dating this person at the time who had, like, um, some daughters who, like, just got a Switch. And, you know, they're, like, preteens. This is this is the kind of stuff that they're selling this to. So me, an idiot, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, well, this would be a great way for us to all have fun. So I bought this Just Dance thing. And they didn't even get to play it. So I got stuck with this stupid thing. <laughs> And I tried, I'm like, all right, let me just pull all the shades down. Let me just try dancing to one of them. And I probably almost threw my hip out. It was just so bad. (laughs) Such a regret. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe I just fell for for this $60 game Wow. that I can't get rid of for, like, even five bucks. 
Wow. Which, by the way, if anyone wants Just Dance 2021, if you pay me shipping, that's that's all I'll ask for. I'll ship it to you. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right. So my biggest my biggest regret for gaming, uh, my biggest regret most of the time in my gaming is uh, is hardware related. Mm. And and no, it's not a Nintendo console. No, it's building that PC. <gasps> You're like, oh, I need more RAM. <laughs> my biggest my biggest regret was actually a Sega console, the mm. 32X. Mm. Yeah. Uh, because I, I honestly got sold on the fact that it was going to like upgrade the existing games I had and that the games that were released for it were going to be... Well, the games that... Uh, I think only like nine games got released for it. You know? <laughs> Their whole bankability was on the fact that, you know, they wanted, they wanted suckers like me to play my old Sega Genesis games with that thing, you know, be wild, you know, and, and that's kind of what, that's kind of what started me getting, getting burnt by Sega because mm. I mean, you know, like I bought a Saturn, you know, I enjoyed my Saturn, but, but I was also one of those, you're I was one of one like 10 people who enjoyed their Saturn. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, no, nah, because like I just started importing games. Like all the all the good all the good stuff was over in Japan, and that's how I yeah. did it. Like like um like there's so let's go back to the 32x real quick. Did you have a 32x and a Sega CD? Did your Genesis look like a broken I transformer? Did. Yes, I, I yeah I did yeah <laughs> yeah. The funniest um, the funniest images of of that is when you see like a a Gen One Sega uh, Genesis hooked up to a Sega CD because it had that extra plate because. The, Gen 1 Genesis was bigger than the Gen 2 and yeah. they had that extra plate underneath to hold the Gen 1 Genesis. You put the 32X inside and then you put Sonic 2 inside Sonic and Knuckles and put it in your 32X. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it literally looked like a Frankenstein's monster and I was yeah. one of those guys. I, I was one of those guys. Mm -hmm. And then you plugged it into Sega TV. Remember Sega TV? Okay, I, didn't have, I, did, I, I remember Sega TV but I did not have Sega TV. Mm -hmm. I wanted Sega <laughs> TV so bad and my parents told me that I wasn't allowed to have it. And I like to me, I just thought you just plugged it into the wall and like it was just like getting TV, but it was like really like, oh no, you have to subscribe and it's like cost money. And like mm -hmm. as an adult, I now understand paying for 75 subscription services that Sega CD oh, yeah. or Sega TV was like the the Netflix of <laughs> Sega at that point. Anyways, sorry, continue. I interrupt oh. a lot. Oh, no, no. Oh no no! Basically, basically, like the whole the whole thirty two X debacle like started me down the dark path of like realizing that Sega, you know, is not my friend, <laughs> and hmm. and and so even though I did shed some real tears when when Sega was like we're getting out of the hardware business, you know, after the Dreamcast because the Dreamcast, I still feel like the Dreamcast was their greatest their greatest success mm -hmm. in the hardware business, oh, yeah. uh, but the same. But at the same time, I was like, you know what? At least now Sega can't like, like, like pull a fast one on me anymore with their with their hardware. I wish, man, I wish there would be like a Dreamcast collection on on the current platforms because, like, I I miss Jet Set, uh, Jet Grind Radio. I miss, you know, I mean, I know like they re-released Shenmue. I don't really miss those games, but like Sonic Adventure and stuff was cool. And just I played the crap out of my Dreamcast, man. Dreamcast was was awesome. Yeah. Rip Sega. Except now Sega is actually more successful than ever, apparently. So. Oh yeah, for real, yeah. Especially with like the Atlas, because they own Atlas, so like Persona and Shin Megami Tensei, and you know, Yakuza is doing well, and Sonic exists still. So. When are they bringing back Space Channel Five? Come on now. I don't, I don't know. Is it my turn? Who's tur is it my is my, my the only one that didn't go? Mark didn't. Oh no, go. I haven't gone. Mark, Mark didn't go. Yeah. Mark, you go. Yeah, my uh, my biggest gaming regret regret is also hardware related, but it's any time that I sold a console to buy uh, something mm -hmm. else. Yeah. Because now, as I'm a little bit older than I was, as humans are prone to do, I want to have all of the consoles that I've had before, and so I've been slowly collecting them through the years, and I feel like that's getting more and more popular to do, and so they're getting more and more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had to rebuy my Nintendo 64. I had to, you know, I still haven't rebought a, a Super NES. I had to rebuy my GameCube. Um, and so I just it's... keep your consoles, even yeah. if you don't play them right now keep them because you will someday yeah yeah uh, 
The mm-hmm. only the only Nintendo console I've ever gotten rid of was the Virtual Boy. I still have all of my console, all my Nintendo consoles. I still have, uh, except for my launch Wii. But that's because I was I was in an apartment fire and lost my original launch Wii. But everything else I have, like all the original stuff that I got, I still have, and I'm very grateful I never got rid of my Nintendo consoles. Now the other consoles I got rid of and you know obviously yeah. like with most of the consoles being backwards compatible now at least with the previous generation like there's no not really any hardware reason it's more nostalgia reasons but like you know the only other consoles i have besides all my nintendo consoles i have a slim ps2 that i kept i have a i have my xbox 360 and i have my Genesis and my Dreamcast. Those are the other consoles that I have. And it's, you know, I'm really happy I never got rid of my Nintendo consoles because those things are, uh, they're, they're a pretty penny to get them back. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, uh, sold, I, I sold my Game Boy Color and I, I, I kind of regret it. I also regret selling a lot of my N64 games back to GameStop back in the day day to like trade up but you get such a crappy deal on them Mm -hmm. and one of them at the time i think it was well jet force gemini i wish i still kept that like why would i do that that's a rare game Mm. um also star fox 64 so i ended up rebuying that because i don't know what i was thinking back then i was just needed money for the next game so it's Uh, a good one mark jet force gemini is on xbox on rare replay yeah yeah i was in case you're nostalgic for (laughs) You know, seven frames a second and, you know, terrible Horrible controls. camera angles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think my biggest gaming regret is getting rid of, like, I mean, I did it because, you know, you, sometimes you just fall into hard situations and you need money and stuff. But, like, uh, when I got rid of my, almost my entire ps2 xbox and gamecube collections of games uh i had i've since got most of my gamecube collection back just because that's the console i cared about the most uh but yeah it's just it was like man i probably had like probably 50 or 60 gamecube games and i just got rid of almost (laughs) all of them oh man Uh, and like now like obviously games like fire emblem are super hard to find and uh, yeah you know, and, and stuff like that. So like, that's that I regret getting rid of those. Uh, there are certain consoles that I would like to like, I'm going to collect for this console, you know, at some point, but, um, yeah, getting rid of those and getting rid of my dreamcast games. Uh, not all of them, just uh, like I kept the games that I have fond memories of, but, um, you know, there's uh, a few that I let get away and really regret. So, Man, keep your consoles, kids. Although, yes, I guess at least at least keep the ones that you have the fondest memories of. Do that. Yeah. Except your iPhone Seven with Fortnite on it, you can get rid of that. <laughs> Is that what consoles are considered these days? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. My nephew, like, we're he's like my nephew's at that awkward age where he's like not old enough to play big kid games but he's too big to play little kid games he's eight and like i'm trying to like find a way to like ease him in and i've gotten him into splatoon he really loves splatoon because it's like you know a shooter but not really um so he likes that but he really wants to play like Fortnite. and he came over one day when i was playing destiny he's like i want to play the space game i'm like oh god what did i do Uh, so yeah, kids. All right, so I guess my topic will hit real quick, and then we'll, you know, get out of here. Let everybody go to bed. I guess uh, my topic is about emulation and kind of the the oh. legal <laughs> the legal versus moral debate on emulation that seemed to have has come up lately because of Metroid Dread. Um, you had to bring a heavy one. I did. Mm. I did. LeRon's just getting ready. I know. I'm God. just going to let him speak for me, too. I feel He's like... Mm. 
I know. I feel like I feel like everybody can go now. Everybody can go to bed. LeBron, <laughs> it's the solo show. Uh, I just, it's just like the Kotaku p- promoted this article, which probably shouldn't have done to promote emulation of a brand new game. But uh, Metroid Dread is running really well on emulators at 4K, 60 frames or higher. Uh, they did the same thing with Breath of the Wild. And what, LeBron? <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? I don't like it. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at the statement because I I know it's true. <laughs> he would know it's true. Mm. <laughs> I know it's true. But but I will say this. I will say this because because the number one rule about emulating games is you have to own a copy of the game first. Guess what? I own my copy of Metroid Dread. I can do whatever the hell I want. Mm. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, so I guess the debate is like, when is it okay to emulate games? When, like, how, like, how far back? What, are, what are your stipulations if you emulate games? Like, what do you hold yourself to the standard? Like, what, what do you do? Because like, there's, there's breathtaking videos of Breath of the Wild running at 8K when four, and ray tracing and 60 frames a second, which is, I'm like, man, I just want Nintendo to build that box for me just just let me do okay that. okay okay before i before i start weighing in on this um i'm i'm not gonna get this on from boss rush right i don't know it depends on what you say i mean uh, hold on i hold on i'm not the person in, in, in the entire fold of boss rush network that has the hottest takes i'm i can we know that for a fact i don't have the hottest takes but i i just need to know for sure like if i start talking about this topic that I no you're that, actually you know, the perfect person to talk about this topic based on <laughs> I, was, I was about to say i don't want to be like that scene in... <laughs> like yeah because like i want to hear what your takes is on this just because you okay. you do have the pc to muscle this type of thing for like newer games forward and everything so mm-hmm. well and yeah i just want to make sure cause i didn't want to wind up being like that scene in mean girls you, you can't sit with us you know the next day You're fired <laughs> <laughs> okay we wear All pink right, on so... wednesdays <laughs> <laughs> okay so first of all first of all like it's not cool to, to it's not cool to pirate and emulate day one games what is cool is if you've already purchased a, a legal copy of the game, then you can do whatever you want. So get that out the way right now. Now, that being said, um, the, there's a case for emulation. Uh, in, the very first, in the very first revamped episode of the, the Boss Rush podcast, uh, Stephanie, was like, well, Stephanie was like, is there a case for games preservation? Mm-hmm. Yes. There is. There is definitely a case for games preservation. There's also there's also a case. There's also a case for people who like who like to tinker with technology and stuff like that. A lot of people, a lot of people honestly are just building emulators and stuff so that in the future, as we get further down the line, the Switch is gonna be an obsolete system one day. The PS5, the PS4, the Xbox Series X, all that stuff, they're gonna be obsolete systems. And there's gonna be a point where just like with just like with our phones, our tablets, our computers and stuff like that, the mm-hmm. operating systems hit end of life and then you can't use them anymore and they wind up being unsupported, you know, and stuff like that. And we just have to we either have to move on or we have to hang on to whatever we have until it dies and stuff like that. Before you move on with this, Laurent, I do want to say, like, this is Metroid. Well, maybe not Metroid isn't the first title, but recent titles on Switch is the first time I've actually felt like Nintendo themselves are pushing games past the hardware limits of this thing. Where, like, you know, Metroid runs great, but, like, only Samus and the enemies move at 60 frames a second. You look around, that smoke runs sub 30. Some yeah. of the effects run sub 30 and this wasn't this this isn't something i'm just like spilling out there digital foundry did a whole thing on this right Mm -hmm. uh it runs sub 900p on tv right it's just like nintendo can't even keep keep their hardware up with the games that they're making and they've always built hardware sustainable for nintendo games and we're starting to see them and like you look at Breath of the Wild, and some of that you can be like, yeah, well, they spent the last year porting it to a different console because it was built for the Wii U. Like, that was some people's argument. But, like, as beautiful and as great of a game as Breath of the Wild was when it came out, like, that 
that game runs sub 20 sometimes when there's a lot of action going on or like Look. you set the grass on fire and there's a guard there's a couple guardians chasing you down like it's Look at Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, you you know, you know, you know, what's crazy is that, you know, it's been a long time since we've seen it. The last video game system I remember seeing, like, slow down was actually a Nintendo system. Uh, The Nintendo, the Super Nintendo was the last system that I remember we dealt with slow down because things mm-hmm. was going on and there was too many frames for the for the for the process to keep up. Mm-hmm. So it's it's crazy that Nintendo has come full circle. They're back to this crap now. Mm-hmm. You know, um, in my review I wrote that one in, in my review I wrote that, you know, like um like the like the age well the the power of the hardware is shown off in Metro Dread because it's a beautiful game. It like, is. My God, it's, like 20, it's Nintendo. 20... I would argue it's Switch's best looking game outside of maybe, maybe Mario Kart, which technically is a Wii U game, but like Metroid yeah. Dread is Nintendo's best looking game. Yeah, but I mean, but I mean, geez, like 23 second loading times, you know, <laughs> you know, especially what when... Especially when you just got through, like either you're getting clobbered or you're chasing something, and you have to hit a you have to hit a, a, a damn near a thirty second loading sequence to get to the next section of the game. That yeah, but I feel bump. like I feel like that stands out now more than ever because of the of the SSDs because and of, the new consoles and oh yeah, yeah. PCs, right? Oh like, yeah, no no doubt. But you know, one of the things that kind of bothered that kind of bothered me is like I'm playing on the digital. I played the digital version of the game. Like the load time should should be should should be somewhat decreased, you know, compared to the compared to the physical copies. Mm-hmm. But when I did the research, the physical copies had just as long, you know, you know, it was almost criminal, mm-hmm. and, you know. But that's just, and, you know, like this is the stuff right there. Like you know, like and this this comes back to what I was saying about what people are trying to do with technology and stuff when it comes to emulators and stuff like that. They're trying to make for in the case of these these games. There's three. There's three reasons why. There's three reasons why. Number, uh, first reason why is because they're people are not 100 percent sure that they are they want to spend the money on the game. So it's always easy. Like and that's where emulators kind of do its thing. Like it's a try before you buy type of thing. And it's always encouraged that if you actually like the game, go back and buy it. There are a lot of people who actually follow that rule. They emulate a game. They see they see what they want, and then they're like, okay, I'm gonna go out and buy this game. You know. I said some. I didn't say everybody does that because we always we all know that some people are just cheap and don't want to spend money and stuff like that. Uh, the second reason about emulators is the fact that you know sometimes sometimes people just don't have the commitment. And when I say they don't have the commitment, they don't have the commitment to see something all the way through. They just want a taste of it and stuff like that. You know, um, and emulators like fits that void. You know, and for the most part, you know, like most people, a lot of people shoot. Like a lot of regular gamers don't beat games they start. Like, <laughs> like I can't even tell you how many games are on my PS4 or on my or on my Steam library that I've started and never finished and never thought about coming back to and stuff like that. Uh, but the third, but the third reason is is because people like being able to play, you know, the games that they that they have the biggest fond, fondest memories of, and that usually reaches back into the library. Um, I. I don't want to. I don't want to make this sound bad, but the reason why a lot of people are upset about the the Nintendo expansion pack is because what they're paying for right now is not what they envision themselves getting. That's what a lot of the main complaints are. The price, the price just doesn't match what they're envisioning right now. But I'm sure as this thing rolls out, like it'll be good. But one thing is like one thing for me, for example, like you know, like the Nintendo 64 library on the expansion pack. Nintendo 64 is not my favorite system, so like I don't really, I'm not really moved by this. But Sega Genesis would have moved the needle for me. The only problem is, is that we have to weed through like, you have to weed through a bunch of Sega Genesis games to find the ones you want to play. So there's also that thing, and that's where emulation comes. People can get exactly what they want and do whatever they want, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Plus, like emulation, especially like that 16-bit and and 32-64-bit era, like licensing is a nightmare, right? And yeah. you're never going to yeah. see any of these games ever again, right? Like there's so one of my favorite franchises especially at that era was is TMNT, right? Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, Hyperstone Heist, two of the best 2D side scrolling beat 'em ups of all time, I would argue. Uh it's great that we're getting a new one, right? In in like 6 months or whatever, but you're never going to see 
Turtles in Time or Hyperstone Heist in their original form ever again because of how many license holders there are, how many publishers are involved, how many, you know, you have you have the comic license, you have the cartoon license, you have the uh, Konami publishing license. You, now Nickelodeon owns the license, so you have to get them involved, right? Like there's so many different people you have to get involved to the point where it's like to even... Even if you were to sell this game outright, it would probably cost like twenty five or thirty dollars because of all the licensing fees you have to pay for in the music license, right? Like, even the music is is licensed out. So, um, that's another reason I think emulation is like big, especially for games that you will never ever see on a current platform. Yeah, and the next and then and the next easiest way to do that it's it's called it's called the Mame emulator. Yeah. <laughs> You just find the you find the ROM and there go your memories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, and and don't get me wrong, like like I like I'm really passionate about emulation and stuff like that. But I'm a 46 year old man. Like a lot of the games, a lot of the games that I remember playing as a kid, no one's even heard about or even thought existed. You know, in this day mm-hmm. and age now and stuff like that. So and you know, your memories are what it is. Just like we have, just like we have our grandparents to talk about seeing movies like Gone with the Wind. You know, mm-hmm. for the first time in theaters and stuff like that. There's there's true emotion and memory to that stuff, and you know when that thing is gone, like you know it's missed, mm-hmm. and so, and so I know we we're talking about like the window of when like it's okay to like start emulating games and stuff like that. So I know I kind of got kind of far into the woods on this, uh, but basically emulators emulators are a tool, and when it's used correctly, uh, it's basically there to to give people more nostalgia, more freedom to do what they want, and things like that. Now, going back to that, don't be don't don't be pirating and emulating day one games. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, mm-hmm. if you know, you know, I can understand if you're trying to pirate and emulate like the Mario 3D All Stars collection because I think I think Nintendo kind of gave everybody the middle finger on that one. Well, I, in, in my honest like, opinion, plus like that. What is it? The Simu Simu uh, emulator and the Dolphin emulator are are. They've made so many good strides in emulating GameCube and Wii and Wii U games on those that it's just like yeah, yeah, at, like yeah. At like this those, point, those, why wouldn't the you? Emulator, you know, yeah, the emulation versions are better than than what Nintendo put out themselves and you know, stuff like that. I'm not trying to make Nintendo the bad guy here. I'm not trying to make Nintendo the bad guy here because God knows, like 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 Sony, Sony, yeah. Sega, Microsoft, they've all they've all committed this crime to people. You know, in some shape, form, or fashion, when it comes to like to like the whole piracy bit and, and to- things like that. You tomorrow, know? tomorrow morning, we see a headline: a hooded Japanese man comes to Laurent's <laughs> house. <laughs> black man, black man murdered in bedroom by hooded Japanese man with an NES zapper. What are you? What are you talking, what are you, what are you talking about? It's going to be a case of extraordinary rendition. They're going to take me back to their country to to, to, to do whatever they want. <laughs> That's how, how do you think Miyamoto gets his life force? He just kidnaps all the people that emulates his games. He, he, he kills he kills the Nintendo naysayers. Just Pick, drains their life force. Pikmin's based on a true story. You know, true story. You know, I guarantee, I guarantee you, the reason why my Nintendo Switch dock acts the hell up is because Nintendo's watching me, and they're like, "Okay, he's ran his mouth a little too long. We're about to make him suffer for a little bit." That's why you can't. That's why they just added Bluetooth so they could hear everything you're saying. <laughs> So, uh, Laurent, you said no. you said Sony and and Microsoft are also guilty of of those crimes. Is it is it is it a crime? I, say, what I, the, I, I mean, say, not a crime. I said a crime, a, right? I said I, yeah. I said it's a I said it's a crime, but you know, uh, you know, okay, for us gamers that would okay whenever these companies do something you know that basically like that basically like rubs our knuckles and stuff like we always feel as consumers we always feel like it's criminal like you know for example like you know actually i'm tired of using nintendo for example let me use let me use um let me use um let me use sony for as an example right okay so when the custom firmware thing was going on big time with the psp and stuff like that like sony started cracking down to the point where like where like you know like even if even if you had stuff on your psp or on your pro- profile that wasn't that wasn't with the with com- in compliance with sony inter- uh, entertainment and stuff like that like you wound up like they would just brick your system 
you know, it wasn't even that you you would lose access to like your PlayStation privilege and stuff like that. It would just brick your system and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like that's kind of egregious in in my opinion, especially if you know if all someone is doing if they're if they're not actually pirating software, but they're using custom firmware to make the system do something that it wasn't programmed to do, you know designed to do at the box. That's one thing. You know, if they if they can't prove that you were doing something illegal with the system, why why brick your system? You know, so. I- so I think that there is this, that there's this thought that like so video games are so personal to people who play video games. It's so personal to them, to their, to their life experience, right? Same mm-hmm. thing with movies. Same thing with books. Same thing with music. It becomes part of our um, memory it's, and a part of our, our, who we it's are. Our, right? It's our DNA. It's our DNA. That's, that's exactly right. But our experience with it is what we own. Yeah. And so and so we if Nintendo decides that they don't want to support Earthborn anymore, that's 100 percent their decision to make. Oh. And oh, yeah. and I think that they're completely within their rights to make that decision. So mm-hmm. so then for people to decide, well, I don't like that decision, so I'm just going to emulate it. That's not. They're, that's not your decision to make is is where I'm coming from. Is yeah. it a crappy decision on Nintendo's part? Yes. Does it suck that you can't play a game that you used to play growing up that you loved? Yes, it does. But they don't... I feel like we feel such a sense of entitlement and ownership over these things. But the fact of the matter is the $60 we paid to play this game does not give us ownership in the game. It gives us ownership in the memories that we made playing the game. And so I, I think that these companies are seen as oftentimes painted as so evil for making these decisions when it's like at the end of the day it's a business decision and so yeah. I, I don't i can't i can't fault them for saying for putting out a crappy version of mario 64 because they're going to do super mario 64 for the nintendo switch online and so that's their decision they didn't have to put it out on the switch that's true and so that's true. i i i just see this I see the point of, of emulation for game preservation. I understand the the emotion and everything tied with that. I do get that for sure. But but to me, it's like we don't own these things. We just get the privilege to play them and make memories with them. And so I don't think that personally, I don't you, think that's something that people should do. I'm do. I'm glad you brought that up because like because because every time we every time we purchase a video game or something like there's always the end user licensing agreement and if anyone has ever like I'm in IT so like I understand alt brick for brick pound for pound what the end user license agreement uh, says is like the money you spent like you think you physically own the game but you only you only spent that money to be able to play it for however long we decide to make it a, a thing mm-hmm. so servers go down and it's unplayable Thank you for thank you for your purchase. You know, so, you know stuff like that. I going back to the Mario 3D All Star collection. I actually have a theory about this collection, and Nintendo has a history of trying things, you know, prototyping things and selling them to to you know to because like one of my one of the things is uh, everybody knows what Pikmin is, right? Like everybody knows Pikmin. Mm-hmm. That game was actually spawned out of the the Space World 128 Mario's demo, right? Yeah, and uh, and they turned around and made a game out of it, right? Uh, Project uh, Project Giant Robot, which was supposed to come out for Wii, actually turned into the Robot Labo Kit. Uh, the Star Fox Zero Bundle in game was actually a Wii proto a Wii U prototype game that never came out. So like. Nintendo does a lot of things to prototype and then they turn it into a game. Maybe it's something they showed off. Maybe it's not. My theory with the Mario 3D All-Stars collection is I feel like this was Nintendo trying to nail down emulation of Nintendo 64, GameCube, and Wii games to the Switch. And they thought, hey, let's nail this down and sell it as a package. And if pe- let's see how people respond to it. And... Let's take what we learned from here, and if we're going to add these systems to Nintendo Switch Online someday, we already know how to do it, and this is the package that we... You know, this was like the prototype package for this uh, offering on Nintendo Switch Online. Um, 
I know that Mario 64 wasn't exactly great on the all-star collections, but that's how we played it originally, right? Like that was for better or for worse. That's how we played <laughs> we it, it on the Nintendo 64, right? Like, uh, and I, I really actually appreciate the work that they put into the GameCube, uh, Mario Sunshine, uh, wide, oh, yeah. sc- wide screen support, you know, a lot of asset cleanup and stuff like it and Mario Galaxy as well. Uh, but you know, if they're putting in the work to em- get these things properly emulated, like I know that Nintendo 64 specifically was, is a system that is has at least back in the day was notoriously hard to emulate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Sega Saturn is actually another system that's notoriously hard to emulate. Uh, and if Nintendo is like really working on the emulation, which people are going to argue, yeah, these console, the, like Nintendo 64 was on the Wii and Wii U They've already emulated it before, whatever. I'm like, that's that's fine, but this is a different piece of hardware, and if they're going to offer this, they need to perfect it if they're going to add it to their system and make people pay fifty dollars for the uh, ex- you know, the online service and the expansion pack, right? So they need to make sure they get it right. So when they start adding games, when they start adding expansions and other systems to this to the uh, offerings, like. They know what they're doing and they know what they have. Um, and that, I mean, that's just my theory. I feel like Nintendo has always been weird about emulation when they're, when they're trying it themselves, right? There is that thing in the, on the Wii when they were selling Super Mario Brothers. It actually was an emulated version of Super Mario Brothers and not the original source code for Mario Bro- <laughs> Super Mario Brothers. Uh, but, you know, Nintendo has has been, you know, always been trying to get us to somehow give them money for their old games and i think that with this subscription model they had to at least put out a product to say hey we think we got it hope you like mario 64 in its original form again (laughs) you know people you know people complain about wanting about you know wanting to preserve have preservation of old games (laughs) and then they release the old game and people complain that they're releasing the old game, but they're complaining that they want to have the right to preserve. So, right. I mean, with Nintendo specifically, not to talk on Nintendo, they're damned if they do or damned if they don't, because Nintendo is perceived as a, a terrible company that makes really great games. It's, I mean, um, it's, and, it's and the mix not... of, it's the mix of nostalgia. Actually, plus... I feel like that's, I feel like Microsoft is the, is the terrible company that makes good games. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Nintendo is just like, it's the mix of nostalgia mixed with we don't know what to do with our old games so we're just going to resell them mixed with you know the internet <laughs> well, yeah but people will pay for it yeah i will gladly pay well, for yeah, Super like Mario to Bros. me three till the day i die on every single Nintendo yeah. system that i own yeah like to me so it, to me actually, like hold, uh, actually hold, uh, wait you know what super mario 3 i will only spend money if it's Super Mario Advance, Super Mario Brothers three, mm. I will not buy the, Get the out. NES version. Get I out. will not. No, I will they not. They changed the physics in that version. It's bad. Oh no no no! It plays. It plays like it plays like it's supposed to play. No, it like, plays. I, it I, plays. I, it plays like crap. Go away. I'm dying, You're fired. I am dying. On, I am dying on the hill that the Super Mario Advance series of the Super <laughs> Mario games are are the are the ones that we were meant to play. To be fair, I do own all of those for Game Boy Advance, and they're all very good. Uh. It's the best version of Mario Two, by the way. Is that As, Game Boy Advance like, version? Here's the, thing about, here's the thing about it. Like, I would have jumped all over like the the Nintendo expansion pack if they had Game Boy Advance. Well, the rumor uh, yes. the rumor is is that Game Boy and Game Boy Advance are going to be part of the twenty dollars version at some point. Oh, then then, then I'll be satisfied. Because so, uh, that <laughs> Surely was that's around the corner. Well, the rumor was that the Game Boy games were coming first before uh, Nintendo sixty four. Right. right. And 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 that's something I can't wrap my head. Everyone know. Everyone knows. Everyone knows who I am. I have a seventy-five inch like four K television. <laughs> There's no way in hell I was going to play a Everybody Game Boy game. Everybody knows who I am. I'm LeBron. There's no way in hell I'm going <laughs> to play 803. a Game Boy game. <laughs> Social media, follow me. Check out my muscles. Oh. <laughs> I lost my sleeves, all of them. Every shirt y'all, I own, y'all, gone. Y'all want me- Y'all want me? Y'all want me? To, y'all want me to play a 68p game on a 4K television? Thank you very much. No. <laughs> Another t-shirt idea. Everybody yeah. knows. Everybody. 
Everybody knows Yo, who that I is am. A good, that is a good t-shirt idea. <laughs> hey, hey, merch no, store, boss. Everybody knows who I am. Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So. So yeah. So to answer the original question. No one, no one has any business emulating day one games. At least, uh, you know, day one games. Like you know, like get it, get it first, play it. You know, do your thing with it. Let it get, let it get past its initial. Uh, we talked about this yesterday on Crossroads, actually, because like we were talking about the value of, uh, like, how do you t- determine the value of a game uh, as far as pricing? Like, is a game worth sixty dollars, or is it more worth a forty dollar game, or is it more like a ten dollar game and stuff like that? We talked about that. And one of the things, and one of the things that factors into pricing is like, is like how much, how much of a budget the developers spent on it, and what they think their turnaround time is going to be to make that money. And usually, the window for the window for the sales to make that to see if they're going to make that money back is usually the first five months of the game being released. Mm-hmm. Usually, yeah, and stuff like that. So you know, like, so you know, like in situations like that, you know, like give a game a half a year before you start doing some fuckery with it. You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like a game like a game like Metroid Dread is like, it's clearly for the hardcore fans, right? Like it's clearly like you look at you look at Metroid and Super Metroid, it's, and you're like, this is a clear sequel to the NES and Super Nintendo game. Like, you want to hear you want to hear something crazy though? Metroid Dread, Metroid Dread has already outsold the the highest selling Metroid game in Japan. It's already I know it's already outsold the entirety of the 2D series combined. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, so, good on, so, good on Mercury Steam, by the way, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they've had this such a hit. This is the kind of people didn't like. <laughs> I mean, they've had a hit or miss record, right? Starting with Castlevania, the Castlevania games, right? Like the Lord of Shadow. The Lords of Shadow. Yeah, and like, yeah, the same as for Turns. Like that was a good remake, right? But like, you know, people kind of blew it off because it was on 3DS and it was a remake of the Game Boy game, right? So for them to come out and deliver, like not just deliver but they delivered on dread and like there's so much up against that game too right like mercury steam hit or miss record dread that name being around for 17 years uh a 2d metroid a brand new 2d metroid for so long like it they delivered gotta give them so much credit by the way as a guy that as a guy that played and beat metroid dread i still don't understand the name of the game it was uh it it's I mean, it was just the name of the sequel that that they teased in. I want to say Metroid Prime Three. They teased the name, and then it was it came up on a bunch of lists in like Nintendo Power as like uh, the next Metroid game. Metroid Dread is coming to DS at some point, and then it just never came out. So, I mean, I don't know what the name means. It was just it's a cool name. It I mean, it, it didn't it didn't scare me at all. Like I mean. I it do. didn't scare you at all. The Emmy sections didn't get didn't make you. Oh my gosh, dude! The, the, no, the no, Emmys no, suck. No, no. Although, no, yeah, exactly. I have I have figured out how to counter them about half the time. So. Yeah, me too. My my record for countering them has gotten a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but no, like the um, but, well, see, the reason why the Emmys didn't scare me is because your very first Emmy encounter, the game told you you have an opportunity to escape an Emmy uh-huh. attack. You had an opportunity, so I was like, so instead of me just being like, oh, I'm just gonna run from these suckers every time I see them. I was always try- if I got caught, I was always trying to counter them. Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh... it never, it never scared, it, it never scared me. And then, the, the, like the game over scene, mm-hmm. like getting a game over from an Emmy encounter, you, you, when you continue, it didn't even send you that far back. No, you know. Yeah. So it was like, it's like, yeah, like I, I lost like 15 seconds off my playtime. I do, I do have to. Uh say that i still don't know what button the counter button is i just slam them every single button on the controller at the same time I just I hope it works. each time yeah. <laughs> so um, it's the x it's the x button I oh just, is I, it i had to look i i i slam but, every single button on the on the controller. okay but but here but here's the thing because i'm not sure if i told you guys this the last time i talked about dread uh depending on depending on how it grabs you if it grabs you from the left side or the right side there's two different windows. There's two different timing windows for how you break it. I've gotten I've gotten pro at breaking an Emmy encounter if it grabs me from the right. I've gotten pro at that. Well, there's the one uh, where it, it like grabs you and holds you down, and then there's one where it like picks you up. I don't yeah. know if that's Emmy specific or if that's just like, hey, this is where we caught you. 
type thing. No, no, it's it's, it's how they catch you. It's how you catch you. There's four different an, there's four different animations for how they catch you. Mm. Um, and then, and there's and for each animation, there's two different ways to break it. Mm. Well, two different timing windows, I should say, because you got the timing window. The first timing window is when is when it is when it try is when the arm tries to like grab you and pin you. The second one is when it tries to like mm. basically spike you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, there you go. Anybody else have anything to say about emulation before we uh, kind of wrap up here? No, I don't. Don't emulate games unless they're old or unavailable. That's that's it. So just don't be a jerk. Yeah, don't be a jerk. God, for real, for real. That easy. Just, or, just a or good rule of thumb for all things, right? Or yeah. at least, or at least follow the rules of convention that I said about when it comes to emulation. Mm. You have to already own a copy of the game before you can start doing whatever you want to with it. Mm. Mm. But you know, what, what what do I know? I'm just a guy that writes reviews, hosts a podcast, <coughs> and, and you know, tries to play scary games during the month of October and fails at it. <laughs> Failed miserably. Eleven more days. Mm. Anyways, I want to thank everybody for watching and/or listening. Mark, thank you for joining us tonight. I, yeah, this was awesome. Yeah, had a great time. Yeah, uh, you're welcome back anytime. Obviously, I want to play your sound effect game, so you have to come back at least yeah. one more time. Yeah, we loved uh, having you. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for having me. Where can Wonderful people? Talks. Where can people find you? Uh, on Twitter, uh, my Twitter handle is except in Pereira, which is my last name, which is not easy to find, but because uh, it's difficult to spell. But it, my, you spell my last name P E R E I R A. And so it's, you know, I before E, except in Pereira, because it's EI. Mm. <laughs> I thought I was super clever when I came up with it, but it's way too much to explain. Look, we all think we're clever when we come up with these Twitter names. And then you oh, look sure. at it six months later and you're like, what was I thinking? And then the sure. one you really want is gone. So, yep. Right. So, yeah, well, that's where you can find me. Well, you do a great job writing and heading up the entertainment side Thanks. recently and, and, I like your marathon movie movie reviews. Just check it out on bossrush.net. Um, appreciate your time. Stephanie, where can we find you? Yeah, I was just going to scold Mark. Like, yeah, you should really you know, promote yourself. Mark's got great articles up on the site. He writes wonderful news, banter pieces, um, spearheading entertainment. So catch his stuff on the site, as well as Leron's re- review of Metroid Dread. He did a fantastic job. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Klima... Uh, Oh, crap. I'm so tired. I can't even remember what order my my Twitter handle is all of a sudden. My eye's twitching. That's how tired I am. At Klimov, K-L-I-M-O-V underscore author. I also write uh, for Boss Rush as well. Check out our website. Laron? Uh, as you know what? I'll make it real easy for you. X is eight zero three. E X O D U S eight zero three. That's my that's my social media handle. That's my Twitch and YouTube channels. That's also my gamer tags on the various platforms I play and stuff like that. Just remember that. You're good to go. Twitch.tv slash X is eight oh three. Tuesday nights at eight PM Eastern Standard Time for Crossroads PlayStation Podcast. And you guys already know I'm here Wednesday nights for the Boss Rush Podcast. Nice. You can find me at I am Corey and HD on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me hosting uh, Arsenal X, the Xbox podcast. You can find me popping in and out of uh, Nintendo Power Block. Uh, you can find all of our content on bossrush.net. Remember to like, subscribe, share, rate, and review wherever you consume our show. And until next time, we love you. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh, hold my on. gosh. Before, before we. <laughs> Before we before we go before we go rest in peace to Chris Aries. Uh, you may you may or may not know that name, but you definitely know who he is. That was the voice of Frieza for Dragon Ball Super. Oh, he passed away. R.I.P. Rest in peace. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> oh. So long. So long. Take care of your loved ones. Ciao.